fears come from common occurrences that we share, and one of those are sounds in the night. It's the stuff of nightmares, which means a starting place for many of the scary stories we tell ourselves. The dark is scary because we can still hear things out there. In addition to being afraid of the dark, and, and actually in tandem with being afraid of the dark, when we're deprived of one sense, our vision, obviously our other senses become more important. And so um, our sense of hearing is one of the sources that is going to become a source of fear. Two of the stories in the Scary Stories collection, um, Sounds and Footsteps, address that directly. Footsteps is a story about a child who's home alone and hearing footsteps going through their house but seeing nothing to go with the sound, nothing that could be making the sound. The picture comes above the story title and it's illustrating the impossibility of the sound with the impossibility of feet breaking through the floor and ceiling like rubber, pushing down, and the end result is blobby and unreal and terrifying in that way that only nightmares can be. The idea of something coming through the walls from somewhere outside is prevalent in horror. Well, maybe it's, it's uh, the house settling or whatever. We, we know that the world makes sounds. I hear a sound. I have to make sense of it. I can't just say, oh, it's just a sound. A number of these tales Alvin Schwartz collected from a selection of folk tales called Blue Nose Ghosts. Many of Nova Scotia's people were isolated in small settlements along the coast. Storytelling was everybody's pastime in the evening. It became very quiet at night. In one lonely house, a sailor's wife, a cousin of hers and her two boys were turning in one night while the man of the house was away at sea. Filling in the voids, the unknowns, when we hear strange noises at night, is a natural entry point for storytelling and our collective imaginations. Next day, the neighbors came and heard a story that was not hard to understand for anyone raised on local folklore. They all knew there was a type of ghost called a forerunner, a ghost that came in the form of sound, but not sight, and told of impending death. Talk of sounds at night lead directly into this 1987 classic. The Gate features a boy who hears strange noises at night. It leads to an urban legend that touches on how and why we often tell ourselves scary stories to make sense of our world. There's a scene in the film The Gate where a young boy is telling another boy a story, a scary story, about a worker who has gotten walled up in the house. But Terry told me something. What? Well, he said a long time ago, when they were building our house, a workman got killed. And the other workman didn't want to tell the police, so they sealed him up in one of our walls. Look, son. Let me tell you something about Terry. You remember last year when Terry's mom died. Yeah. The father does what parents do and tells his son that, you know, well, this is from your friend Terry's psychological trauma of losing his mother. What Hollywood then does with that in this film is it makes it real. Way to go. <laughs> Terry! Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Workman. I just made it up. And this is a very fascinating trope or idea that, that comes from our archaic past, and that is that, that naming something brings it into being. When the character that this child has imagined, because he, he insists, I made it up, I made it up, I made it up, it takes him over. That suggests that, okay, it's, it's almost like a temporal sequence. I made something up to deal with the tragic thing that happened to me. By naming it, I called it into being. When I called it into being, it took power over me. Terry! 
Sometimes there are monsters in the walls, sure. But what if we find that the walls are the safest place to be? There is an interesting subversion of these ideas in the next film. The wonderful beginning to Wes Craven's People Under the Stairs is of the boy protagonist, nicknamed Fool, and his older sister reading tarot cards for his 13th birthday. We are introduced to knights and devils, and of course, the Fool card. The Fool is a fool because he has not been tested yet, just as many tales of knights who must prove their worth. Ain't the stupid kind of fool, only the ignorant kind because he's just starting out. That's better, I guess. Right through the fire of the sun. he get burned up if he do that. Just the boy part get burned up. The rest come out the other side of man. And no one calls him fool again. Wes Craven knows this well. Craven loves fairy tales. Whether it is producing Wishmaster or adding Hansel and Gretel to a new nightmare, after examining People Under the Stairs, it becomes obvious to me that People Under the Stairs is Craven's take on the traditional knight's tale. Alice has been bad. She's been feeding that thing between the walls again. Oh. Stop. Let's take a step back and unpack this. The Princess and the Dragon Slayer motif has a long storied history. Perseus of Ancient Greece, the three princesses of Whiteland from Norwegian lore, Jack the Giant Slayer, oh, and Shrek, Super Mario Brothers, and countless other examples. Let us break down some common elements of these various stories. They often begin with the land in peril. Often the beast is somehow hoarding the treasures. No doubt you've heard of our trouble at home. A dragon, fire and stench. It is evil. Often that means the poor are very poor turning tricks on the strip. Willie's a crack addict, and uh, what's the other one's name? What's he in jail for? Assault. Washington, and he didn't do nothing. He tried to put food on the damn table, and that's what I'm trying to teach the boy to do. He wants to be a doctor. You can't even afford to pay rent. How the hell are you gonna afford to send him to medical school? Whether it is a dragon or a giant or the king and queen, something is keeping the riches from the people of the land. He just wanna bring the wrecking ball in so he can line his pockets. No. Leave him alone. I heard things about him. Bad things. You heard about the gold? The riches could be actual gold, or symbolized in the princess, or both. The hero, the knight, is depicted as unworthy in some way. The story is meant to depict his journey to prove his worth. You didn't slay the dragon? It's on my to-do list. This journey to slay the mighty beast or whatever it may be, will save the land. Other common elements. The princess is often kept inside the walls, separate from the land. Well, that's outside, not in here. So you get outside, don't you? The princess is often chained up, waiting for the beast to come. In People Under the Stairs, the sadomasochistic black outfit Daddy wears is a modern depiction of the dragon. Let me down, please. Be done with your riddles! When faced with the beast, the knight proves his worth by facing the creature, egging it on, but also tricking it. You're counting that money. You let it roll through your fingers. I've done it myself. Your success has made you some bitter enemies. And finally, the joyous ending, where the people of the land are set free. How does this inform our talk of walls and monsters? In People Under the Stairs, the walls are walls of class and wealth. Castle walls keeping the poor in the neighborhood outside, while keeping the rich safe in their castle. 
Then again, another reading is that it is a comment on Ronald and Nancy Reagan and their trickle-down economics. Sound is an interesting opening for scary stories and films. Beginning with the first sounds we hear in bed at night, to the settling of an old home. Nice to see the rich folks get rats too. It is one of the most fundamental components of where we find horror in the world. If you haven't already, please check out Scary Stories, now available on streaming and DVD. Thanks for listening to this episode of Scary Studies, the series that examines the stories, movies, and myths of what we find scary. All done with the ultimate message. Horror is fascinating.